In this video, we will be going over page three of the MDE LCRR service line inventory spreadsheet. And page three is titled Information of First Portion of Service Line. On this page, water systems will need to provide required information related to the first portion of each service line they have in their distribution systems. When you first open this page, you will see that similar to page 2B, column C through column U contains data that are carried over from page 2A. Under these columns, you will see a note under row 4 stating that these are data carried over from page 2A and that any necessary changes should be made on page 2A. Again, as mentioned in the previous video, if we, would, if we try to make any changes on this page, page 3, similar to page 2B, you will not be able to do so and you'll get an error message. So if you need to make changes um, under column C uh, through U, through column U, please be sure to navigate back to page 2A where you can make the, the necessary change. And as you can see here, when I changed ABC01 to, uh, to ABC01 new, when you go back to page 3, the change will automatically uh, appear. So let me then change this back to ABC01. And again, you'll see ABC01 here as well. And um, again, similar to other pages that we have gone through so far in previous training videos, if a cell is highlighted in yellow, it means that information is required to be provided in that cell. So water systems should look for cells that are blank and highlighted in yellow. In this example, we already see that cells that are blank and highlighted in yellow under are under column B, which is again asking for the date of most recent update of data related to service line on this page. So again, this column is for water systems to indicate the date on which uh, the data was most recently updated for the service line on this page. And uh, for the initial service line inventory, the date that water system will provide here can be the date that the water system submit the initial inventory submission to MDE. Now, uh, for this video, we'll come back to this column after we have finished providing all of the required information on this page. So as I mentioned earlier, Water system should now look for cells that are blank and that are highlighted in yellow. So we're going to start scrolling to the right and see where we can find those cells. And the first cell that I see here that are that is highlighted in yellow is under column Y, which asks for, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, the material of current service line pipe, first portion of service line, including all segments. And before we go into more detail related to this column, I actually wanted to mention the couple of columns that we skipped over. So I'm gonna scroll back to the left just to show you uh, what columns that we skipped before we get to the first required columns on this page. And as you can see here, there are reasons that we can skip uh, this, these two columns, which are related to the material water main at the point where it is connected to the service line and uh, related to a question regarding uh, does the valve connecting the water main to the service line contain more than 8% lead? So if you look at the column heading here or the field name, there are uh, in green color, 
And if you recall from previous video related to the introduction page, which I will navigate to now, there is a color-coded legend um, uh, for columns table here, where green indicates that the, the cells under those columns are optional, but highly recommended. And that information may be needed for validation of verification purposes, BIL funding eligibility, uh, and future LCR requirements. So whenever you see uh, the green color columns, it means that these are optional. So if water, if your water system wants to populate data under these columns, please feel free to do so. Uh, otherwise, we can skip these columns. And we also see that there's a column that is currently hashed out right now. And similar to what I mentioned in previous video, uh, this column is applicable only for inventory update. And it is not applicable for initial service line inventory. And uh, since we are right now uh, working to complete inventory at uh, the initial service line inventory the spreadsheet automatically hash out the cells that are not applicable so we do not have to worry about uh, this hash out cells and so again in this video we'll be focusing on the columns that are applicable under the service line inventory uh, so now let's scroll over to look for um, the yellow highlighted cells on this page, as I mentioned earlier, we have one for material of the current service line pipe. And if we scroll a little bit more to the right, we'll see another one under column AC, which is related to the diameter of the current service line pipe. If you scroll a little bit more, we now see under column AE, that asks for installation year of current service line pipe. And if we scroll further, you see a column that have error messages. Again, uh, throughout the inventory spreadsheet, we have columns that auto-generate uh, certain data based on the information provided. And um, if the required information has not been provided completely, you will see an error message. So as an example here, since we have not populated any required data yet on this page, the column AJ, which will automatically generate the material classification of the first portion of the service line will have error message. And uh, currently the error message reads, error, service line pipe material cannot be left blank on page three which is currently true because the material, the current service line pipe is currently blank. So let's scroll through the rest of the pages to see currently if there's any yellow highlighted cells anywhere else. And we do not have any at the moment, but what you'll see later on is that when we start to input the required data, um, and base, and depending on the data that we select, you will see additional yellow highlighted cells. So as you have probably noticed at this point, the inventory spreadsheet is asking you to provide information related to the material, the diameter, and the installation year of each of the service sign in your distribution system. Now, these three uh, pieces of information, right, is referred to as the characteristics of service line. And these characteristics could potentially determine the service line material. And we'll go into that a little bit more in a few minutes. And you also see that the spreadsheet 
is asking you to provide the basis of how you determine or obtain those characteristics. And these are referred to as basis of determination. For instance, if uh, we know that the material of the first portion of the service line of the ABC01 service line is plastic, then you'll see that this cell is highlighted after we make the selection. This is because if you indicated that you know what the material is of the service line pipe, then the spreadsheet will ask you to provide how you arrive at that uh, at this information. And uh, so, in other words, right, we now need to provide how we were able to determine, or you are able to determine, that the material of the first portion of service sign is plastic, right? which can be through records or other investigation methods. And you'll see later that the spreadsheet is set up in such a way that the water system will only need to provide the information related to the material, diameter, and or installation year, including how these information were determined or obtained. And then the service line material classification will automatically be generated based on information the water system provide. Now, before we go further into the inventory spreadsheet, I would like to navigate to Appendix D, which is where we can find detailed information related to the basis of determination, if this is the first time you have encountered this terminology, as well as the investigation method. So to get to Appendix D, Again, we'll scroll through the pages at the bottom by clicking on the button uh, located in the lower left-hand corner of the spreadsheet until you see Appendix A through Appendix G. And here we're going to go to Appendix D and we'll click here to access Appendix D. So now we have Appendix D open. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And Appendix D contains a lot of information related to investigation methods as well as basis of determination. In this video, I will briefly go through the three characteristics that we mentioned earlier, which is material, diameter, and installation year, and the overall category of the investigation methods, and the basis of determination. So, as mentioned earlier, the three characteristics of interest are material, diameter, and insulation year. So, if the material of the service line is known, right, then the service line material classification will be determined directly from that. However, in a situation where the material of the service line pipe is not known, the diameter and or installation year of the service line can potentially help water system determine the service line material. For the purpose of the service line inventory, the pipe diameter that is greater than three inches will indicate that the service line is non-lead. And this is because there's been very few instances of lead service line as large as three inches in diameter in the US. And most lead service line were found to be two inches or less in diameter. Also, for the purpose of the service line inventory, service line pipes that were installed on or after May 17, 1972, will be classified as a non-lead service line. And this is because May 17, 1972 was the effective date of the regulations that exclude lead, right, or do not include lead as the lit in the list of acceptable service line pipe materials. 
also if there was a local ordinance that was in effect prior to May 17, 1972, that indicates that lead was not an acceptable service line pipe material, then the service line pipe that was installed on or after the effective date of the local ordinance will be classified as non-lead service line. And if you your water system have uh, this particular situation, a copy of the local ordinance will also need to be provided to MDE when your water system submit the initial inventory to MDE. Now we're going to move on to table D1, which summarize or list the investigation methods that are approved by MDE for each of the characteristics. It also rank the investigation methods in the order of accuracy. So for material, the investigation methods include field investigation, visual inspection of exposed service line pipe with or without excavation, followed by field investigation, non-exposed service line pipe inspection, and then followed by records review, and lastly, analytics slash predictive methods. For the diameter, it is the same as the material, um, except that it does not include analytics or predictive methods. For insulation year, the only method that can be used to determine or obtain the insulation year of a service line is through records. So records review, uh, only records review is listed under uh, the investigation method for insulation year. Now we'll not go into more details related to each of the investigation methods in this video. However, water system should review Appendix D for additional details including which records are acceptable, as well as which location along the service lines are approved by MDE for visual inspections. Now we're going to move on to table D2, which lists MDE approved basis of determination for each of the characteristics of the service line and in the order of accuracy. So, and so on the inventory spreadsheet, if the water system indicate that the material, diameter, and or insulation year are known, then the water system will also need to indicate or select one of the basis of determination as shown here on the inventory spreadsheet. So, for instance, if water system found through records that only uh, through records only, right, and not using other investigation methods, that service line pipe material is copper, then the water system should look through this list to see uh, the options that is that most accurately represent uh, that situation and that would be option number five here which reads pipe material obtained directly from records only and not from other investigation methods now instead if the water system only no, does not have any records and have to go out to perform a visual inspection to determine the material of the service line and found that to be copper, right? Then in that instance, uh, water systems should select on the spreadsheet option number two, uh, where pipe material obtain is obtained directly from only field investigation via visual inspection of the exposed service line pipe with or without excavation. 
Now, let's say that if we have a situation where the water system has a record that says the pipe material is copper, and in addition, the water system also perform a visual inspection, right, which confirm that the material is copper, then the water system should select option number one, which states that the pipe material is obtained directly from records and field investigation via visual inspection of exposed service line pipe with or without excavation, right? And if you read on, you'll see that this option is applicable only if the material from both records and field investigation matches, which in our example uh, is the situation, right? Now let's say if the water system have records that said the service line pipe is copper, and when it, when it went out to do the visual inspection, of the exposed service line pipe, they actually found the pipe material to be plastic, right? Which in this situation, that means there's the, the information from records does not match. The information obtained from field investigation via visual inspection. In that situation, right, the water system will choose option number two, where Pipe material is will then be obtained directly from only field investigation via visual inspection because we rank the field investigation via visual inspection higher than records review. So in this situation, when water system has record and also went out to do field investigation via visual inspection and the information does not match, the water system should put in on the spreadsheet the material or the information found through visual inspection, which would be in this example plastic, and select option number two. So um, we also have options available in the situation where the pipe material was determined based on the other characteristics. Um, uh, in other words, you know, based on either the diameter or the insulation year. Now, the only way that the material can be determined based on the pipe material and insulation years in a situation where uh, the pipe material, uh, excuse me, the pipe diameter is greater than three inches, which would mean that the water system can uh it will be able to say that the pipe material is non-lead right based on the fact that the pipe diameter is greater than three inches similarly water system can indicate on the spreadsheet that the pipe material is non-lead um, if the installation date of that portion of the service line um, was on or after May 17, 1972. And if they have a uh, local ordinance that was in effect prior to May 17, 1972, that excludes lead from acceptable service line pipe material, then water system can indicate on the spreadsheet uh, that the pipe material is non-lead and select this option. So similar logic applies to the basis of determination for diameter. As you will see, when you compare between these two columns for material and diameter, number one through number five uh, matches exactly, right, between the basis of determination for material and basis of determination for diameter. And uh, if you look for diameter under option number six, we also have an option that should be that should only be selected in the situation where 
the diameter of the second portion of the service line pipe is greater than three inches, which automatically indicates that the first portion of the service line must also be greater than three inches. And this is, and this is true in order to maintain the necessary water pressure, right? The downstream portion of the service line, uh, its diameter will need to be smaller than the upstream portion of the service line. This means that if water system knows the diameter of the second portion, but doesn't know the diameter of the first portion of the service line, the water system will be able to say uh, that the first portion of the service line is greater than three inches if the pipe diameter of the second portion of the service line is also greater than three inches. Now for installation year, right? As we mentioned earlier in table D1, only records uh, can be used to determine or obtain the installation year of uh, a service line. So if there's a record that, that indicate a date or a year that the pipe was installed, right? Then number option number one, uh, installation year obtained directly from records should be selected on the inventory spreadsheet. However, if wa the water system does not have a record that, that directly indicates when the service sign was installed, the water system may determine the installation year based on the year that the water system was built and if that is the case water system should choose between number two and number 2.1 now if the water system determined the insulation year of the service line to be based on the year that the structure was built, then either number three or 3.1 should be selected on the inventory spreadsheet. We are not going to go into too much detail of uh, what these of these options are, but if your water system are using the year that the water system was built or the year that the structure was built to determine the installation year of the service line, then please be sure to review Appendix D uh, because there are certain conditions that must be met before water system can select number two, 2.1, three or 3.1. Now, before we switch back to the inventory spreadsheet, I wanted to mention uh, the concept of segment. To circle back to that, um, we talked about segment in the previous videos um, uh, of page one. Oh, my apologies, page 2A. So, uh, but it is important that I want to mention here as well. So if in a situation where the water system is aware that they have a portion of service line um, that consists of, or is made up of multiple segment as, uh, shown here as, it, as an example in this diagram, uh, then the water system will need to keep in mind that the material diameter and or insulation year may not, might not be the same for all of the segment that made up that portion. 
So for instance, if the material of segment one, right, here, it could be made of copper, and material of segment two could be made of lead. And so uh, for these situations, water system should follow the guidelines um, in Appendix D on this page, which is page three, on how to enter the data on the inventory spreadsheet. When you encounter multiple segment and the fact that the individual characters, characteristic are not the same for all segment that comprise that portion. So, uh, and in addition to that, right, water system should also indicate on the inventory spreadsheet the basis of determination for each uh, individual segment as well. For instance, if records was used to determine the material of uh, segment number one, right, um, but the visual inspection was performed on segment number two, right, then the water system will need to choose, then let me scroll to D2, right, the water system will need to make sure that they choose option number five and option number two under the basis of termination, one for each of the segment. So with that, let's go back to the inventory spreadsheet, page three of that. And again, in order to go back to the page that you want, you might need to scroll through the pages and locate the page that you want to go back to, which is for us right now, page three. Right. So let's say we are now going to populate some example data so you can see how the spreadsheet um, you know, reacts to the information that we're providing. So under material, there are many options that water system can choose from. And um, you may need to scroll up and down the options to find the uh, the material that uh, that you need um, for each of the service line. We the options also include don't know or unknown. And let's say if we select this option, you'll see that the next column over, which is the basis of material determination, is automatically hashed out. And this is because if you don't know what the material is, then there is really no basis of determination, right? You, and so that is not need to be provided. So now let's say that we actually uh, looked through our records um, and we found that the first portion of the ABC01 service line is made of plastic. You then see that the cell under basis of material determination is now highlighted in yellow. And this means um, and basically an indication that we will need to provide information under this cell. So again, this uh, contains uh, multiple options. And these options matches exactly with the options that are listed in Appendix D. And there are 11 options total. So since we indicated that we, that we found that the pipe material was plastic through records only, then we'll need to make sure that we select number five, right? Option number five which reads pipe material obtained directly from records only, right? Now, let's say instead we actually do not have any records. We went out to actually visual inspect the service line, right? Then what we actually need to do is we need to select number two, option number two instead. Now, when 
you make a selection under these uh, under this uh, basis of determination columns. What I haven't not mentioned is that this option allow uh, this column allows for multi-select dropdown, which means that water system may select as many options as they want. However, the multiple selection is only applicable in a situation where your water system has multiple segments. So again, um, multiple segment, right, is a situation like this when you have what, the portion of service line that is split into multiple segment. And so you should choose a basis of material for one of the segment and uh, for, for each of the segments separately. In this case, however, if you look at the information that we provided in previous videos, if you scroll back to the left here, we indicated that the first portion of the service line, right, is uh, made up of one segment. So if that is the case, right, whenever you see number one in uh, under how many segment makes up first portion of the service line, you should only have one of this option selected. So now that we have, let's say, you know, three options selected here, how do we get rid of the options that we actually don't want? So we, you know, for, for our current example, we want to actually have it to show as number two only being selected in this cell. Now there are multiple ways to do this. You can treat this basically as uh, similar to a checkbox. So, you know, we now want to uncheck round number five, right? Then all you have to do is click on number five again, and it will disappear. Similarly, we want to get rid of number eight. Then we click on number eight again, then it would disappear. It's basically deselecting the option, right? Or let's say if we want to get rid of everything, right? Let's say we have so many selected by accident. We now want to get rid of uh, everything to, and start over. You just need to make sure that you select the blank option, which is located at the very top of the drop down option. And that would be set, you know, the selection to nothing. And then you can make the selection that you want, which for us, let's just say, you know, now is, is number number two, which is where we go out and uh, to do visual inspection. And that's the only investigation method that we have performed because we do not have any records to say that this, that uh, what the material of, of this portion of service line is. So now let's say that, you know, we're going to say that instead of having uh, to go out and do visual inspection only, um, if your water system instead have records to say that the material is plastic, and the water system also went out to perform visual inspection on the pipe, right? And um, you and the water system confirmed through visual inspection that is plastic. Then the option again that you should choose, similar to when we um when i mentioned earlier as i was going through appendix d that option number one should be selected instead so what i'm going to do is going to clear my selection and select number one right number one is where uh should be true should be selected in a situation where water system was able to find the material through records and in the case that if they also went out to do visual inspection, which then confirmed that the material uh, matches with the information uh, on records. Okay. So um, then that is pretty much what the basis of material 
uh, determination column is for. And so now let's scroll to the right and we'll see that another column is now highlighted in yellow, which means that we'll have to provide information. Um, and this column ask was first portion of service line pipe include any and all segment of the first portion ever led in the past so this question is very important for the first portion of the service line pipe and it's only applicable for the first portion of service line pipe um and uh why does someone need to provide that information now, again, there are several options that water system can choose from, including don't know, because the water system may not have, um, you know, information related to the service line, whether or not, you know, the material was let in the past. And if this option is chosen, then the, co the next column over will automatically be hashed out. Uh, and this column, the next column over here is asking for the description of method used to make the determination as to whether or not the first portion was ever let in the past. So since we say we don't know whether or not there was let in the past, then we are not required to provide uh, you know, where we get that information from because it does not exist. Water system also have option to say yes, let in the past, if they have, you know, records that um, indicate that it was let in the past, or, or if not, right, if it was confirmed through documented records that the service line was not let in the past, then water system has that option as well. And now this column to the right of it is highlighted in yellow, which means that water system is required to indicate uh, or provide in the description of methods used to make the determination that, for, in for this instance, uh, the first portion of the service line pipe of ABC or one service line pipe was never let in the past. So you can see that in the example row of data here, which is which is located um, on row seven, you can give uh, the description of tap tie card if this is what you use, right, to confirm. Now, you can also you also have options um, of don't know and not applicable, uh, and. Uh, corresponding second portion of service line is not galvanized. This option is only applicable if the wire system know uh, that the second portion of the service line downstream from uh, this first portion is not galvanized, right? Because again, why does it? Why is this important? Is because if there is a galvanized pipe downstream from a lead service line pipe or a previously lead service line pipe, then the entire material uh, classification for that service line will be galvanized requiring replacement. So if downstream from this first portion, right, uh, the downstream second uh, portion uh, of the service line pipe is not galvanized, then whether or not the first portion was let in the past is not would not be applicable. So again, water system should select this option only if they know that the second portion of the service line downstream from this from the first portion of the service line is not galvanized. And we also have an option for don't know and not applicable. Uh, second portion of service line does not exist. Um, in other words, scenario A. So water system uh, can select this option for service line that are scenario A. However, if they're not, if, if the service line is not scenario A, water system 
should not be selecting this option, right? And the last option, and one of the last option that the wire system can also uh, select, it reads not applicable corresponding entire second portion of service line was installed after or at the same time the entire first portion and both portions were installed on or after May 17, 1972 or the date on which local ordinance became effective. I know there's a lot of words here, but what this option is for is uh, for the situation where the water system, right, will need to have the installation date for both of the portion of the service line, first of all, in order to, to determine whether or not this, this option is applicable, uh, this option can be selected. Water system should have the installation date of both portions, of portion one, of the first portion, of the second portion of the service line. And the installation date of both of the portions must be on or after May 17, 1972, or on or after the date on which the local ordinance became effective. And then lastly, the installation year of the second portion of the service line must be later than or the same as the installation year of the first portion of the service line. Basically to say that, you know, the first portion is installed first, and then the second portion is installed later, or the entire line, right? Both first portion and second portion were installed at the same time. And this option is basically to say that we don't really need to know whether or not the first portion of the service line pipe was ever lit in the past because at that point in time, the, uh, you know, if the service line was installed on or after May 17, 1972, or the date on which local ordinance became effective, by then the pipes would not be a lead pipe because it was excluded right, from, from the acceptable list of uh, service line material and uh, so uh it doesn't really matter at that point whether or not you know uh, the first portion was ever led in the past because even if the second portion was galvanized it would never have been downstream from a lead service line pipe but again the second portion would have uh need to be installed at the same time as the first portion or after um, the first portion was installed. Now, um, so let's say that for this example, we are gonna say we don't know whether or not it was led in the past. And um, then we don't have to provide any information in the cell and it's automatically hashed out already. So then the next required cell that is highlighted in yellow is currently blank is uh, for us to provide the diameter of the current service line pipe of the first portion of the service line. So again, there are a few options to choose from, including don't know or unknown. And again, when, you, when this option is selected, the next column over, which asks for the basis of the diameter determination will automatically be hashed out. And then, um, then that would be it um, for information related to diameter. Now, there are also options um, for uh, ranges of diameter, which could be less than one, greater than one, equal to uh, one, but less than two, all the way up to greater than three, right? When water systems select any of these uh, actual diameters or the ranges of diameter, you'll see that the basis of diameter determination is now uh, highlighted in yellow, which means that we'll have to choose um, one of these options, right? And let's say we're gonna say that the pipe is less than one inch 
in diameter. And for this example, we're going to say that we obtained it uh, from, let's say, going out to do field investigation, right? Which should be number two. Then the next column over is now related to the installation year of the current service line pipe. For the first portion of the service line only. Again, on page three, we're only focusing on the first portion of the service line. So again, there are many options to choose from. You can scroll through all of these. And as always, one of the options include would be uh, don't know unknown. Right, and again, the next column over that asks for the basis of installation year is now hashed out because we don't know what the installation year is. And that means there would be no basis of determination. Now, let's say if we do know the installation year, and let's say the installation year is 1960, then you can choose from the range, the general range of year. Um, so for 1960 would be 1971 or earlier, or you can scroll through and find 1960 and make that selection as well. Or you can type in 1960 um, directly into the cell. Okay. And the fact that we were able to say that the installation year is 1960, we now have to also provide the basis of determination. And for this example, we'll say that we obtained the installation year directly from records. Okay. Now, if we scroll to the right to look at column AJ, which we saw earlier. And if you recall, there was an error message, right? And now we no longer have the error message there. We actually instead have the material classification, which is automatically generated based on the selection that we had just made. In this case, it um, classified the service line, this first portion, right? Now, again, we're only working with the first portion of the service line. And it classified the first portion of the service line to be non-led, but system does not know if it was previously led. And this is true because we indicate that the service line is made of plastic, but we don't know whether or not it was ever led in the past. Right? Now, if we were to change this option, let's say, you know, instead we actually um, look through the records and we found that it was never led in the past, right? And let's say it was from tab tie card, right? Then if we were to look at the material classification again, you see that we automatically generated to a different material classification based on the information that we just changed, which now is read non-led and never previously led. Right. So water system, as I mentioned earlier, what water system um, uh, will need to provide is only the information that they know. And once they provide that information, the spreadsheet will automatically generate the material classification for each of the service lines. Uh, and the water system will not need to do that. And let's do let's do another example where let's say we were able to confirm that the that um, the the pipe the first portion of service line pipe was led in the past. And again, we could do tab high card, right? And in this situation, in this example. The classification is now non-led, but was previously led, right? So that is how the spreadsheet works. Now, 
this is not quite the end um, of what the water system will need to do. What again, what we need to do is to make sure that we do not have any uh, yellow highlighted cells that are blank um, for the rest of the column on this page for ABC01. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the right and add an I can already uh, see one um, cell that is highlighted in yellow here and is blank. So I'm going to stop here and look to see what the spreadsheet is asking. So here, the spreadsheet is asking um, if the if records were used to obtain the material of the current service line pipe on the first portion, right, we need to now indicate the type of records used. And why is it asking? Uh, this question, right? Why is it asking me to indicate the type of records? It is because under the basis of determination for material, we indicate that the pipe material was obtained directly from records, right? And field investigation. The fact that we indicated that it's obtained directly from records, the spreadsheet is now asking for us to provide the type of records that was used um to obtain the pipe material right so let's go and fill that out right so again we have multiple options to choose from and this column is a multi-select drop down meaning that water system may select more than one of the options so they should select all the records that were used to obtain the pipe material Right, for our example, right, it would be the, the records that were used to obtain that the pipe material is plastic, right? And, you know, the example could be, okay, I got that from the tap tie drill service card. Let's say that they were also um, records of work, right? Maintenance or inspection performed by water system personnel or contractor, right? Uh, then that's what the water system should do. And so and, and if that's it, then we can move on to the next column that's highlighted in yellow. And we see here, um, and for this one, it's asking for us to indicate the type of records used for the installation year, right? Again, we are being asked this question because we indicated that the installation year was 1960 and it was obtained directly from records, right? So now we have to provide records that the installation year was obtained from. And let's say for this example, we'll say tap tight drill service cards, right? Now let's go to the right to see if there's any other blank cells that are highlighted in yellow and I'm seeing one here. And let's take a look. This is column AX. And it reads, if visual inspection of exposed service line pipe with or without excavation was conducted on the first portion of the service line, right, including any and all segment with or without excavation, then we need to select the number of NDE approved locations that were visually inspected. Again, to uh, for more information related to NDE approved locations, please be sure to look at Appendix D. And so depending on you know, the location that you perform the visual inspection of the service line, uh, we'll just have to indicate the number. We, we don't need to know the actual location that you perform the uh, visual inspection, just how many, right? And whether or not the excavation was performed. So, for this example, we can just say, uh, you know, we looked at one of the location um, and we had to excavate, okay? And once you select that option, you'll see that these columns uh, to the right of it are highlighted in yellow. So we, we will need to take a look. However, uh, I want to point out that even though this cell is highlighted in yellow, it's actually optional in this, um, uh, in, in this instance is because if you look at the description, right, on row six, you'll see that it's optional, but highly recommended. 
So if you encounter yellow highlighted cell and the description said optional, then you can and leave them blank. Um, the reason that we highlight in yellow here is because, you know, uh, it's highly recommended that you provide the information um, that may help you keep track of, you know, the number of locations of, of whether or not you perform excavation and, and you'll see um, other columns that would be related to, you know, how the visual inspection was performed and whether or not there's there are initial additional uh, material tests that were performed on, on the service line pipes. Um, and you can also tell whether or not it's optional based on the color um, of the column uh, headers here or the field names. So on column AX here, you'll see that this is in the light blue um, color. Anything that's in light blue color here would be required. And again, um, if you go back to the introduction page, you'll see this table here, right? A color-coded legend for columns and a light blue means must be provided. It cannot be left blank. So for column AY here, you can see that it's in green color. And again, green color means optional but highly recommended. So uh, we can leave the cells blank, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in anyways, because let's say I have the information already here and I want to keep track of, of this information on the inventory spreadsheet, then we're gonna read what this question is asking for. This one is asking, well, you indicated that um, you have performed visual inspection, which requires excavation, right? Then we are being asked to select the type of excavation performed. So let's say I did mechanical excavation, so I choose that. The next column over is asking for us to select the visual inspection techniques that was performed. So um, you, there are three options to hold all that you can select. We have in person at the location. So you know if you were there in person or what is some person that were there in person to look at the pipes to say that it's plastic, that would be in person at the location. In addition, if they take photographs, um, to have someone else at the water system looks at it as well, then read photographs. Photographs can also be used in the situation where the customer, right, um, uh, provides water system with photographs uh, and th the water system is the one looking at the photographs to make that determination. So that that's also um, uh, applicable here as well as videos. So again, uh, for more information related to visual inspection of exposed service line pipe with or without excavation, please be sure to review Appendix D. And uh, the next column over here that I see highlighted in yellow is asking for us to select additional material tests perform. Now, the additional material tests could be you know, pipe service test, which is a scratch test or magnet test or lead swab, uh, lead surface swab test. You could also have electrical conductivity at the current um, on the exterior of the pipe or electrical resistance um, test on the exterior of the pipe. Now, you can see that you can select multiple options. So you should select all of the tests that your water system actually perform on this portion of the service line. Um, however, if you did not perform any of the additional tests, this is not required anyways, right? Then you can leave that blank. And again, more detail regarding additional material tests can be found on Appendix D. So let's scroll to, through the rest of the columns and see if there are any other cells that are highlighted in yellow. And we do not see any more. Um, so we have, at this point so far, completed data entry for ABC-01 service line, except for column B, right? which we'll come back to fill out the date, but let's say we 
since I know ABC01 is complete at this point, I can go ahead and let's say I'm going to put in the date, right, um, of when I plan to submit the service line inventory um, so that I can uh, be sure that I have complete all the columns for this particular service line, right? So um, now let's do a couple more examples here. And uh, let's say for ABC-02, right? We're gonna say we don't know anything about this portion, the first portion of service line for ABC-02 service line at all. So we don't know what the material is. And I don't know whether or not it was let in the past. I also don't know what the diameter is. I also don't know what installation year uh, was. So then if I scroll to the right and look at the auto-generated material classification, I do not have any errors. That means I have you know, provided the required data in order for the spreadsheet to generate the material classification. And this is generated to be class uh, list status unknown, which is accurate for the based on the information that we provided, right? And if you scroll all the way to the right, you'll see that there are no yellow highlighted cells for ABC2, which means that we have now complete um, ABC2 service line on this page. Right. So now again, I can put the date here. Um, this is what I'm just going to do. I'm just going to put the date um, right now for the ones that I've completed. So now let's take a look at, um, we're going to do um, one last example here for ABC03 service line and ABC04 service line. And the reason is because if you recall from a previous video, um, when we were filling out page 2A, we have indicated that these two service line uh, is uh, under scenario D, right? We have selected scenario D for these two service line. And what does scenario D means? It means that there are two portion of service line in total. So there's first portion and second portion of service line. And the entire line from the water main to structure is owned by different entities. For example, it could be system, the, uh, who owns the first portion and the customer who owns the second portion. However, the first portion of the service line branches or feeds into multiple second portions. Uh, in other words, downstream service line. What does that mean, right? So let's navigate to Appendix A again, where we can see uh, the four scenarios that we uh, went over in the previous video on page 2A. So we're going to scroll through the pages again using uh, the button um, in the lower left-hand corner of the spreadsheet until you see Appendix A through G. And we're going to access Appendix A by clicking here, which brings up Appendix A here. And you'll see that These, uh, you'll see diagrams for each of the scenarios. And um, for scenario D, you'll see that this is a situ an example situation for scenario D where you have the first portion of the service line branches into two uh, service line here, right? Two, port uh, two or multiple portions of the second uh, portions of the service line. So what we're trying to say here is the first portion for both of these two service line is essentially the same pipe, right? So logically, if you are filling in the information related to the first portion of the service line for these two service line, right? it will have to be exactly the same because it's essentially the same pipe. So the spreadsheet, right, on page three, which we'll go back to right now, 
is ask us to provide information related to the first portion of the service line, right? First uh, information of the first portion of service line, which means that any information that we provide on this page that we provide um, for ABC-03 will need to be this exactly the same information for ABC-04 because the first portion of service line is the same pipe. Right, so let's let's go through an example, which means that if I say that this pipe, um, I know it to be copper with, with less solder, then it has to be the same for ABC04 because, right, it is the same pipe. So then the same thing, how do we know that to be the case? Let's say we obtain directly from records only, right? Again, so it would have to be uh, the same for both of these service lines um, for the first portion. And that's only true for the first portion of the service line. When you go to page four, right? And start filling out information related to the second portion of the service line, it might be different, right? Because they're not the same pipe anymore. You could have, you know, on the left here, uh, the second portion of the service line uh, for the light blue service line could be made of plastic. And on the right, this one could be made of lead, right? But the first portion, if it's copper, it has to be copper, right, for, for both. So then um, let's say we do not know whether or not it was lead in the past. And let's say we don't know what the diameter is either, right? Or the insulation year, right? Because let's say our records only indicate the material, right? And if you look at the status, at the material classification now, right, you'll see that uh, it generates not, uh, the classification of non-lead, but the system does not know whether or not it was previously lead, and it should be the same for both of these service lines. And again, we'll scroll through quickly to see if there's any information we need to provide. And again, because we say that records were used to obtain the material of the service line, right? We need to indicate, and let's say we get that from uh, meter insulation. Right, and it has to be true for, for both of the service line here on page three. And let's see if we have any other columns that we have to worry about, which we do not. I, I have scrolled through all of them and we do not have any more yellow highlighted cells. And which means that we have now completed ABC uh, uh, dash 03 and ABC dash 04 service line, right? Again, I'm going to put the date here. And that is uh, the example that I want to show in the videos today. And um, so what we have done so far is completing all of the required uh, cells for, you know, uh, the four service lines that uh, we have out of six service lines that we have as an example. And um, I guess that is pretty much it. So, you know, for, for your water system, for your inventory spreadsheet, you just need to make sure and go through and make sure that you do not have any cells that are left um, in blank and that are highlighted in yellow, right? And also look for the fact that whether or not you have error messages because they, are, um, they can potentially be helpful um, in determining you know, what information is still missing um, from the spreadsheet in order for the material classification to be generated. So this is it for page three, which asks for information related to the first portion of each uh, service line. Again, I want to uh, reiterate that water system should make sure that there are no error messages under 
uh, column AJ before proceeding to page four. Now, where the page four of the MDELC or our service line inventory spreadsheet, which is related to the second portion of the service line information, is not covered in this video. However, page four contains all minus a few columns um, that appeared on page three. Uh, so similar logic presented in this video can be followed uh, to complete the information required on page four. And uh, this is the end of this video for page three of the MDE LCRR service line inventory spreadsheet related to first portion of the service line information. Thank you.